Hey there, and thanks for watching. In this Watch Me Build style video, I'm going to be building a custom rent schedule module for long term leases. Now, this is really simple uh, and yet incredibly powerful. So, what you're seeing right now is a export from a non Excel based um, tool for uh, maybe you get it from a, a broker. Um, where that tool exports a rent roll. This particular rent roll is a simple rent roll with, with one tenant, but outspits the, the details about the tenant, a rent schedule, maybe some details about the lease. And then your task may be in Excel to actually model the, the base rent cash flows for that tenant. Um, and so I'm going to show you just a really simple way to actually do that. Um, using an index match function. So first off, if I were to model this, I have, again, my export here, and this could go anywhere in my model. Uh, I'm just throwing it at the top of this worksheet for, uh, for simplicity's sake here. Uh, and then I'm gonna come down here and I would have a rent roll, which would model the monthly cash flows from each of my tenants. In this case, one tenant, and you might have one or more tenants. And then the rent roll would uh, roll up to my potential gross rent line in, in my operating statement, uh, which would eventually lead through my reimbursements and layer in vacancy and credit loss, um, other income to get to an effective gross revenue minus all my operating expenses to NOI, right? So but I'm sticking here in the rent roll. And, and the reason why this is so powerful is you often get these exports and you have this long schedule of rents, right? And and the this tenant, by the way, was paying $4.15 uh, per square foot per year. And then the lease started May 2013, goes for April 2033. And then these are the changes in rent over time. And so as of the making of this video, actually I have an analysis start of January 2022. And so we're really gonna be looking at this rent here, but we want it to be dynamic. We want to be able to change the analysis start date. Uh, we want to automatically calculate the rent in each of the years without having to, to do it in a more manual fashion. And so that's what we're going to do now. So the first thing is I will label this section rent roll. I'll have some headings here and I've, I've pre-formatted many of this. So I have gross leasable area. I have a start date for the lease. I have an end date. I have a lease type, um, initial rent per square foot and initial rent. Um, widen that out a bit. Uh, I have an amount per square foot and an amount. And what I like to do is I will, I will be building, or I would, if this were my, my full model, I would build a, um, let me, I would build my pro forma here. Uh, likely my forward looking 12 months would be in this column. And so that's why it's called amount. In this case, I'll just be taking the sum of the first 12 months of rent. Then I'll drop in my tenant's name here. I think it's called, actually I can link to it. So I'll go equals uh, National Insulation Inc. That's a hypothetical company. Um, gross leasable area, 595,000. This happens to be an industrial tenant in a, a large distribution center. Um, start date is, and I have to manually enter this, this is May 1st, 2013. That's the start of this lease. And then it ends April 30th, 2033. All right, so a 20 year lease, starting May 1st, 2013, ending May or April 30th, 2033. This is a triple net lease, meaning, um, in fact, it's an absolute triple net, no landlord responsibilities. Uh, our initial rent, I can link to this, was I think it was 415 per square foot. Yep, 415. And then the actual initial rent is that amount multiplied by our gross leasable area. So next we need to create a header for our rent. And I first need our month zero, so I'll do that month zero. Now you'll notice that I've added a label within the cell. You can do that by going control one. It opens up my format cells dialog box. I create a custom uh, formatting type. Then I just wrap the word month into quotation marks. And then I add a zero at the end. That zero denotes a numeric value. The month is a label within the cell. And the result is I can type, say, 125. And it's going to say month 
125, right? So we'll start month zero, then I'll just take that previous month, add one to it, and that gives me month one, and I'll go out actually to 180 months of analysis. Then I have my ending date for each period will go right above this. And so if my analysis starts January, 2022, my month zero actually starts uh, December 31st, 2021. So I come here, I go equals, I'm gonna use an EO month function. What that does is it takes some date and it, it goes a certain number of months ahead or behind that date and then drops the very last date of that month. So in this case, I would take my analysis start which is January, 2022, and then I'll do a negative one months. Now we'll just simply look at the month previous to January, 2022, and then drop in the last date of that month. So in this case, December 31st, 2021, and then I'll use right next to this EO month, the previous date, and then add one month ahead. And now it'll be the last day of each month going forward. And then I'll just copy this out to the right, all the way out to uh, 180 right there. And there we get month 180 is our very last cell in this range. And so that's our analysis period, or at least that's the number of months that we're modeling for our rent schedule. Now, oftentimes our analysis period will actually only be 10 years, but we'll still model out say 15 years of rent so we can understand how rent changes past the analysis period. We also may want to use, say, the forward-looking 12 months uh, at the end of our analysis to calculate reversion value. And, and so that's why, in this case, I'm going out to 180. Now, here comes the formula and the crux of this video is I will write one formula that will automatically look at this table and output the rent for that month. And I do that first by writing some Boolean logic. If you're familiar with Boolean logic, it's basically a true or false statement that you write in Excel. Uh, if you're an accelerator, remember you're very familiar with this concept. Um, if you're not, it simply outputs either a true or a false, and a true it has a value of one in Excel, and a false has a value of zero. So I go and, and the first and question I'm gonna ask is, is the current date that we're in, and I'm gonna lock in the row with an F4, one, two times. And that way, if I were to copy this down, say I have multiple tenants, I can use this exact same formula. I'm gonna ask, is this date greater than or equal to the lease start date? And then hit F4, one, two, three times, locking in the column, but leaving the row relative. So that's the first question. The second in this and statement, is the current date, hit F4, one, two times, less than or equal to our end date. Hit F4, one, two, three times. And now what this will do is it'll simply ask, let me close this for now. It, it will return, is the current date within the lease? In fact, I can copy it out to the right and what you'll see is once we get beyond April 30th, 2033, let's come out here. You'll see once we hit May 2033, it's false. April is still true. So um, false again has a value in Excel of zero, true has a value of one, which means we can take this formula again and we can multiply it by any value and a true will result in that value, a false will, will result in zero. And so what is the value? Well, we're gonna take index an index is simply going to output a value within some array. And the array is the rent. Hit F4 on that to lock in that entire array. And then, it, then the index asks, okay, within that, within that array, which row would you like me to find? And in this case, right, the row is whatever corresponds to, and we're looking at the date now, January 31st, 2022, and on all of the rent within that month. And I look over here, and that would be, let's see, 20, January 2022. That is $5.06 per square foot per year. And that's what I want to output. That is row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And so if I were to just simply type eight, now to close parentheses, you're gonna see now that it outputs that 506, 
Okay, that was the index. However, we, we need this to be dynamic. We can't obviously just write eight and then nine when nine happens and 10, that, that becomes manual. So we're gonna use what's called a match. And match essentially goes and finds a value within an array. And the lookup value is what? It is the date in which the period is. And I will hit F4 one two times to lock in the row again in, in the event we were to use this formula for subsequent tenants in, in this range. And then the lookup array. What's the lookup array? It is this array. Now you might ask, well, um, the January 31st, 2022 does not appear in this array. However, what happens is if we don't set a match type, uh, Excel will output the value that is less than that amount, but greater than the previous amount. Or in other words, and I can hit enter on this, you'll see it outputs 506. Essentially what it's doing is it's uh, finding the value that this is less than but closest to um, and outputs that. So then I can, so now I have the rent per square foot per year. Now I just need to take, again, come back in here into our index and I will divide it by 12 to output a monthly value and then I will multiply it by the gross lease of Valeria. Hit F4, one, two, three times, hit enter, and we can copy this out to the right. And what you'll see now is as of, you see our first bump here in the month of May, 2022, as expected. May 1st, we have this bump to 518. And so April, 2022 still is the 506. Once we hit May, 2022, it bumps. And then each May thereafter, we see bumps occurring. And we can see that all the way out here. Here's another May, from April to May. And then of course, at the end of the lease term, it goes from whatever rent it was as of the last year of the lease to zero. And from there, it would go to some market leasing assumptions. So that is how I build a custom rent schedule. Uh, using just an export of a rent roll and then quickly grabbing uh, using index match to grab a value from uh, some some rent schedule and modeling it out over, in this case, 180 months. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on this. Otherwise, thanks for your time.